Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome listeners to Advantages to Aging. I'm your host, DJ Horton, and today I have with me the gene queen, Diane Gilman, who is known all over the place in TV and a fashion designer and an author, the author of The Too Young to Be Old, How to Stay Vibrant, Visible, and Forever in Blue Jeans. And we're going to find out <laughs> how she does it. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I wonder how I do it sometimes too. You know, I agree with that statement. Oftentimes we just go about our lives and people think we're extraordinary where we just go, yeah, but I'm just doing the thing that I always do. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think purposeful people who are constantly saying, I set goals for myself every day. Every That's morning, I figure out, like making orange juice, squeezing it fresh and getting that last drop out of each orange. Every morning, I figure out, what am I doing? What's my purpose for the day? What am I going to accomplish? Oh, yeah, and feel good about it at the end. Yep. I never leave myself alone, I swear. I, I'm right there with you. And I love that analogy, squeezing the last drop out of your orange for your orange juice. I like to squeeze the last drop out of my life. Yeah. Because I want to be living every single moment as Me if it too. might be my last. Which brings us to the subject of our <laughs> topic today. It is all about making the most of your third act. So Diane, let me ask you, how do you define your third act? You know, I think because, um, and I would say very unwittingly, I became a, a television personality when QVC first asked me 29 years ago to come on air. I started to see life in show business terms. And so I figured, okay, your first act is your childhood, and that's just sort of setting you up with all these different circumstances kind of out of your control. Your second act, most people see as the true meat of their life. It's you meet the right man, you have a marriage, it's storybook, you have children because that's what you're supposed to do you have a career alongside it you're the perfect taskmaster of all these different parts of your life and then you drop off the map as if the world is flat and you just came to the end of it and nobody ever says to you oh, i bet you can't wait till you get older so that you can what sit around and do nothing, go to a million doctor's appointments. I mean, there is no plan there. There is no incentive or drive or where's the meat? Well, it's never in your third act, which actually, if you love Broadway or you love a great Broadway play turned into a movie, you see that the third act is the culmination of all the different dangling strings of the story coming together uh, and forming a beautiful tapestry. The third act should have the killer song, if it's a musical, which in my case it definitely would be. It has an incredible dance number. It leaves you so inspired you're floating out of the theater. But no one ever instructs us that that's what it should be, or that that's what it can be, or how to get there. And so that is my third act challenge, is these are the most precious years. You can't screw around, pardon me, anymore. You can't say, like, I was always like Scarlett O'Hara, oh, well, I'll just think about it tomorrow. No, 
<laughs> we're not thinking about it tomorrow anymore. Tomorrow is here and it's today. So it's knowing that no one's asking you to be 30 or 40 again. You are what you are, 50, 60, 70, in my case, in my high 70s, 80s. And no one expects you to do anything. And, you know, so I think on one hand, your third act can be your greatest because expectations for you are so low. You can blow people's minds just by doing something great where you may be totally crowded out of the field in your mid age. That is my third act is recognizing that we are not going to be on earth forever. How are you going to make the most of every day? How are you going to self-motivate? How are you going to make yourself feel good about you? Because I think a lot of us wind up almost being angry at ourselves for being old. You can't run that 3K marathon anymore. You know, one of my uh, all-time great idols, the Rolling Stones, Keith Richards, had the best quote ever. He said, life's a funny thing. Nobody wants to grow old, but no one wants to die young. True, true. Right? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, interesting that you said about nobody has expectations. And too often, I find that people don't have expectations for themselves either. Yeah. We talked about, you know, squeezing that last drop out of the orange, setting those goals for your day. So what expectations should the listeners be kind of like setting themselves up for success in their third act. You know, I just heard a story that I found very touching and I will have women because my fan base on Teleretail was very close to me. We had a real emotional bond, even though it was around 650,000 women. So a couple of women just emailed me and said, I lost my husband. I don't even know who I am anymore. I don't feel I have any purpose. So the first thing I think you have to do is you have to just take a deep breath and be silent and look around yourself. What gives you a sense of satisfaction? So here's a story I heard. A woman was losing her husband. She was in her late 60s. She was in the hospital sitting with him every day. She was a great gardener. She loved gardening. So she started bringing him, knowing that he would probably never come back home, bouquets of flowers she'd raised every day. And one day, one of the nurses said, that's so pretty. Can I take one of the bouquets down to the second floor? That's a children's floor. It would really cheer them up. So now the woman starts coming into the hospital with a couple of bouquets a day. And then she starts visiting the children's floor. And then the hospital comes to her and says, you know, your bouquets are so beautiful. We'd love to carry them and open up a little flower shop for you. And now she does it nationally. She never had the intent. She just followed her heart and did something that made sense to her and made her feel good, maybe bringing beauty into a not so beautiful hospital world and became her purpose. I mean, I know my purpose is I'm a good communicator. I learned that on television, being on TV for 30 years. And I want to lift my sisterhood up to see what an elevated part of life your third act can be, because the majority of us don't think that or believe it or it may be, even feel, oh, no, that's that's not in tune with nature. Trust me, if you're still here, like me, at 77 years old, you're here for a purpose. Now you find your purpose. Now, I listeners, I know you can't see yeah. Diane, but she definitely does not look like she's 77. <laughs> so <Thank you. laughs> listen up. Debbie Joe with Neora. You know what our brand partners love the most about their Neora business? They can do it from anywhere. Think about it. Haven't you always wanted to have your own schedule, be your own boss, maybe even have a global business and be able to run it from your favorite coffee shop or lounging by the pool or seaside? 
not having to go into the office, we make sure that all of our brand partners have all of the tools they need to run their business while fitting it into their busy lives. So if that's something that you've been curious about, what it might be like for you to be able to do life on your own terms, then I think we need to chat. Interesting that you talked about um, the opportunity that presented itself to this woman while she was, you know, in an area of life that is not comfortable. But the reality is but there's that, a lot of loss. Yeah. Yes, a lot of loss, but there's opportunities around us all the time. And in our first act, we're too young to act on them. In our second act, we're too busy to act on them. In our third right. act, you get the choice of deciding which one, two, or many opportunities you actually want to take advantage of. And so that leads me to uh, my next question is, with all of this opportunity around us, how can we be effective and constructive in our third act and really be able to utilize everything we've experienced to this point? You know, I tell you another story. I'm a great storyteller here. Um, if I was a young child, and let's say I was staying with my grandparents and they still had cable the way an old girl like me has cable, what would I think if I was a seven-year-old of what a 77-year-old's life is? All I would see on television would be commercials for horrible physical conditions that are deteriorating, mm -hmm. drugs you take for them, the horrible side effects of those drugs, putting yourself in a, a assisted living or old age home. You know, you almost have to tune out society. Yes. And turn around and ask yourself, what are you capable of? When um, when I went to step back, and I'm not going to use the word retirement because I really want to become a force on social media for my age group. When I stepped back from teleretail recently at the end of the year, everybody said, ah, so you're retiring now. So why don't you just kick back and smell the roses? Jesus, sounds like, why don't I just put myself in a funeral parlor? <laughs> don't tell me what to do. Everybody's got an opinion of what you should do with your old age. You should travel all the time, not with the travel industry the way it is. You should just do nothing and kind of contemplate life and smell the roses. No, not going to happen. So what it becomes is, I think, you have to tune out everybody else's opinion who could be 50 years away from the situation you're going into where you're not going into an office every day. And what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Listen, maybe you want to donate your time and work for a politician to get them elected. Maybe because politics always fascinates me. Maybe you want to do something that's interested for you all your life. Like I love real estate. And do you want to do that and get your license? And, and there you can really kind of call your shots and your time is yours. But there are opportunities out there. Nobody is going to give them to you. I really took notes and I always make a little list. What's good about my life? What's bad about my life? What am I talented at? What am I not? What am I interested in? What am I not? And I came to the conclusion that there were so many parallels for me in social media, where I could still do videos, be in front of a camera. I love writing. So I wrote my second book, Too Young to Be Old, but I would also love to be writing a weekly blog and getting that started. Everyone's telling you what, what to do, but you, that's the problem. You need to shut that off, especially if you have children who are now 40 and 50 years old and they're, oh, mom, don't do that. Oh, mom, that's not right. You, you know, know what? why they say that is because no. you're embarrassing them <laughs> in that they're not doing enough. Most people put limitations on you because they don't want you to do better or do more because it makes them look bad. 
Yep. It has and- nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with the way they see themselves. So you've given us some really great things to think about. And listeners, I hope that you find at least one thing that Diane has said and you put it into action today. Squeeze that orange to the very last drop because you shouldn't be missing out on anything. Make sure that you are hitting subscribe and following along on the private Facebook group, Advantages to Aging. Until next time, this is DJ Horton, your host of Advantages to Aging. Do you think one of the biggest advantages to aging is all the knowledge we gain along the way? Me too. What did you learn today? Share with me in my Facebook group with the same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. Now hit subscribe so you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.